Hi guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Matt Garvey and we are here to talk about making comics today. And it's Thursday, which means it is another indie comic critique. And we have been incredibly fortunate enough to be sent territory by its writer, Blake McCarthy. Blake, thank you so much for sending this over. I really did enjoy it, sir. Um, you've asked me to have a look at this book with fresh eyes and give you know my take on it and point out anything that, you know, Maybe worth pointing out, you know, for subsequent issues, that kind of thing. I want to give a shout out to the rest of your team, sir. So you've got, obviously, Blake McCarthy on the script. You've got Chris Sassman on art. You've got Itch Sen and Sori on colours. And you've got Marco Della Verdi on the letters. But you've also got Shane McCarthy on design. And there is a specific reason why I wanted to give Shane a shout out as well. Because out of all the books that I've been sent so far, this is probably from a design aspect probably the most professional looking the fact that you guys have put some care and attention into the overall design of the look you know with the inside covers that kind of thing i really do appreciate it's something that i personally struggle with with my comics that i'm getting better at so the fact that you guys have put some thought into that you know as you've started you know i think you've done a wonderful job so as a whole first issue i think this is a very good issue but you know you've asked me to you know, look at this with a critical eye and that's what i'm going to do so as always you know let's start from the cover and work our way in but as always you know these are just my opinions you know feel free to disagree with me but you know i'm just gonna tell it as i see it so okay so cover wise again i think it's a very striking issue i think and sorry has done an amazing job with the colors especially pushing the background you know as far into the background as possible without losing the detail i think that's wonderful mr sassman your art is spot on the only problem i've got is i've noticed this in uh, throughout the issue uh, when i say throughout the issue i don't mean constantly it's just every now and then i'll spot it and you've got the issue on the cover as well is your anatomy on occasion does tend to be a little off sometimes you draw a character with a head that's too big for their body or in this case you draw a character with limbs that are too small so you've got your archer here on the front cover her arm is a little bit too small you know it needs to be just a tiny little bit bigger you know to really push that dramatic you know holding the bow it's not a major issue but it's just something you may want to you know pay special attention to you know on subsequent issues the only other issue that i had with the cover was this stop sign behind your other character said it looks strange to me this is me just being nitpicking it looked like a halo i didn't notice it the first time through and then i saw it the second time me personally I would probably take it out. I don't think it needs it. it. Just to me, it just looked a little bit strange. With regards to the logo, I always do this in you know the reviews that I do. I like to throw a black layer on it. Your logo is fantastic. It is a little dark, so it does kind of blend into this big concrete block you've got on the right here. What I would personally do is you know put a brightness layer on it just to make it you know pop out a little bit more. So if I take the black layer off, you know it doesn't change it too much but makes it stand out from the actual background image of the characters and stuff like that a little bit more. But that's just me. You know, that's something that I've noticed on a lot of the other comics that I've done reviews on. The logos tend to, you know, they tend to blend in too much to the actual artwork where, you know, that logo needs to stand out because, again, you need to be able to pick it out on a, on a comic book shelf. So as a whole... I think the colours are actually fantastic through the issue. I think the art's very, very strong. Assessment, I think you are definitely a person to keep an eye on. I think, you know, you've got the potential to be a star at some point. Again, just a little bit more concentrating on, you know, the anatomy and perspective, and I think you're well on the way. The main issues that I had with this comic, Blake, do apologise, buddy. You know, again, it's coming from a place of love. You do have some structural issues. You do have some pacing issues and you do have some dialogue issues in this comic. So I'm going to go from them one by one or, you know, because I don't want to throw too much at you. So let's have a look at that. So what you've got here, Blake, is I've broken down your comic. I've tried to zoom out as much as I can so I'm not spoiling the comic for other people. So your scenes tend to be very, very short or very, very long. And in the short scenes, you've crammed a lot in there. By a lot, I mean dialogue, which is something that we're going to talk about a little bit later. So, for instance, your first scene is only one and a half pages long. Then you've got a three and a half page scene. Then you've got a seven page scene. And then every other subsequent scene is, you know, either two and a half, one and a half, one and a half, or three pages long. It kind of doesn't flow as well as it should. I think you need to practice plotting a little bit more. I did a, a video on how to plot a comic a couple of months ago. I'll put a link in that description. I think you would find that very, very useful going forward. The end detract to the story too much again i really did enjoy it but you know you've asked for my feedback you know and that's something that, I, that i'd give you going forward i do think you tend to cram a little bit too much dialogue into your boxes i think it may be worth going back and trying to trim some of that down especially when you're writing your scripts there you're covering up a lot of art because of your lot of dialogue 
And normally I would say that this is not the fault of the artist for not leaving you enough space, you know, for the letterer to do their work. I just think your dialogue is very, very dense and it could be trimmed down. And I know that you're trying to create like um, your own dialogue for the, you know, this post-apocalyptic, you know, worshipping new gods kind of language. And I like that. But, you know, either less dialogue or pad them scenes out because, you know, you've got a one and a half page scene, a two and a half page scene. Let the scenes breathe, you know, turn that one and a half pages into four pages, you know, give each character room to have their dialogue show off the art a bit more. So, for example, you've got this panel here with your main character talking to her parents. You know, there's one, two, three, four. There's five balloons in one single panel. This probably should be its own page. And, you know, the way it's been crammed in, you're just you're just suffocating the panel a bit too much, buddy. Something that it's not a major issue, but it's something that I would probably, you know, when you're writing dialogue, you know, break it down a little bit more. So you've got one character speaking in one panel, one speaking in another, two speaking in another. Let the dialogue flow from panel to panel a little bit more rather than just ramming it all into one single panel. And another example of this is this panel here where you've got, you know, one of the characters talking, then you've got, you know, your main character reacting, saying nothing, and then the first character speaking again. That should be two panels, you know, because you've crammed so much dialogue into that one panel. You know, the letter, unfortunately, has had to cover up the, one of the character's forehead. So, you know, when you're writing your scripts, it may be worth looking at the dialogue and just trying to break it down more into panels. And then from that, trying to work out how many pages you actually need for a scene. Because, again, you've had very short scenes and you've got very long scenes. And when we talk about structure, I wanted to show this page, which is the second page of your comic. It actually took me three attempts to realize what was actually going on because I thought I was missing something. So, you know, in the first page of your comic, you've got your main character, you know, praying in an abandoned warehouse or wherever it is, like that kind of thing. And then you cut to this second page where you've got, you know, a creature, you know, running past. Then you've got random feet and then someone, you know, pulling a bow. And then in the fourth panel, it turns out it's your main character. I did not know that was your main character. I had to, you know, do a, you know, a Robert Redford, you know, do a double take and, you know, try and work out what was going on. Then I thought, you know what, maybe there might have been a misinterpretation from script artist. And one of the things that I was really impressed with your comic is you actually include the script. So because I was a little bit confused by the art, I was actually able to, you know, put it side by side with the actual script and I can see, you know, what was actually happening and you are suffering from what i call and then syndrome again i've done a video on this is when you are writing your panel descriptions you're putting too many actions in a single panel and what i mean by this so um, we've got your page to panel descriptions here so in the first panel it says you know suddenly she hears and turns her head eyes laser focused in the distance, the outline of a massive black tail deer stag is visible, grazing on a patch of grass in the nearby park. Okay, that's not one action. That's not a description for one panel. One panel would be, suddenly she hears something and turns her head, eyes laser focused. Your character reacting. That should be one panel. And then you've got, in the distance, an outline of the, the stag. That's another panel. And then in the, the second panel, you've got one action. And then you've got a fourth action. So in those two panels, they should actually be four panels. That actually should be its own page. In fact, I would go as far as suddenly, you know, she hears something and turns her head, eyes laser focused. In the second panel, I'd have her picking up her bow. And then in the third panel, have, you know, her notice the deer and then rushing to the bush then taking aim that's how it should work unfortunately you've tried to cram too much into individual panels and that's affecting the story so when you go back to the first page of your comic you've actually written this as a five panel page and your artist has done it as a six but a lot of it's still actually lost so i think your structure is not there sir so again i'm not trying to be mean i'm just trying to point out that when you're writing your script every time you put and then, or this, it's another action, which means it's another panel. So that's something that I would, you know, think about when you're, you know, you're writing your subsequent issues. So you really need to look at your, your plotting of how you plot your scenes and how you break those scenes down into pages. You need to look at your dialogue to make sure that you're not putting too much dialogue into each panel. And you need to look at the actual panel structure of the page and make sure you're not having 
two actions in the same panel so hopefully that makes sense but do you know what as a comic i really enjoyed it i thought it was very very good i'd like to see more again love the the massive creatures i think you know you're just showing some of the signs of someone that's early in their comic career these are mistakes that we all make these are mistakes that i've made as well so hopefully you don't think that i've beat you up too much sir because i think the whole team has done a wonderful job blake yourself included um thank you very much for letting me read this hopefully you found this interesting hopefully you found this useful if you have you know give us a like share and a subscribe i will see you in the next one and remember if i can make comics anyone can take care